Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book from the Legal Action Group, uh, which is the Access to Justice charity. They're celebrating their uh, 50th anniversary this year, uh, being established in 1972, and it's now, of course, 2022. Looking today at this book here, it's called Police Misconduct. It's been published before. Uh, it's now actually in a fifth edition. It has a subtitle of Legal Remedies. The people who've written the uh, book um, are Stephen Cragg, King's Counsel, and Sam Jacobs. Now, Elizabeth was the lead writer on this particular review, and the title we've given it is this, not a particularly um, brilliant title for the, for the review, but just published by LAG, a new fifth edition of Police Misconduct for the post-COVID era. And I think that sums up to a certain extent the way we're looking at things, having now got over the um, pandemic. Let's have a look at the book first. There's a paperback. There it is. There. You've got the uh, spine, which you can probably see there. there. And then on the back, you can probably, you probably find it quite difficult to make out what's actually there. But um, that's basically the blurb for the book. And as I say, it, it, it basically is an essential book for people practicing in this area. The book itself runs to five, nearly 600 pages. There's um, an index at the back by paragraph numbering. At the front, you've got that front page there. There's the blurb about the uh, Legal Action Group, which is a national independent charity which campaigns for equal access to justice for all members of society. And it provides support to the practice of lawyers and advisors, inspires developments in that practice, campaigns for improvements in the law and the administration of justice and stimulates debate on how services should be delivered. It's exactly what they do and I'm very grateful to them. Throughout my years in practice they have been extremely important. <clears throat> do read the preface for this new edition. This is the fifth edition. It sets out some of the changes that have taken place um, and of course it's always useful to know a little bit about um, what is going on in this particular area. Then you've got the content section, um, very important as usual. And um, by the way, for each of the chapters, there's a name. So it, it actually has the people who've written that particular chapter. Then you have a table of cases. And after the table of cases, uh, quite a lot of them, you again get the table of statutes. And after the statutes, table of statutory instruments and after that you get the European and international matters and uh, they're going to be here Brexit or no Brexit uh, then this very useful section on abbreviations I think it's always very important to have the abbreviations because it, today we have so many um, acts of parliament which are abbreviated and it's so easy just to forget a particular thing, what's Talata, what, what are various other things. So it's quite useful to know what um, some of these actual um, abbreviations stand for. For instance, quarks is always a lovely one. It's a lovely word, isn't it? Qualified one-way costs shifting. But quarks, again, it's difficult to sometimes remember them all. Then we get to chapter one. You see there's a little uh, index to the chapter setting out uh, the basic rules. So it starts off with uh, what the aim of the book is. It's to guide lawyers and advisors through the law, practice and procedure of the remedies available where there are allegations of misconduct by the police. So that's where we are. Um, this is a very important book, especially at this particular time after some dreadful things that have happened. I'm not going to talk about the Casey Review, but what I will do is Elizabeth and I had a long discussion about the book and this is basically what we're saying. We're saying there was once a time, more than a few decades ago, when young children were assured that if they ever got lost, they should go up to a nice policeman on the beat, naturally, to take them home. Uh, there's scarcely much point, is there, in pointing out that times have changed and, lamentably, not altogether for the better. Police misconduct in Britain certainly has become almost 
a, a common uh, commonplace matter with resulting cries of outrage and expressions of concern well publicised in the media. And as I've said, there's a lot of, of concern about confidence in the police. I think that's how I put it as a politician and as a lawyer. So not only has police misconduct been widely and frequently reported, especially recently, and of course we've had the cases, there's a book which bears the same title, namely this book here, Police Misconduct, with the subtitle Legal Remedies. first appeared in 1987. It's now out in its new fifth edition from the Legal Action Group, which is the Access to Justice charity. And it's very much welcomed by us and by lawyers and advisors, especially those who are involved in civil actions, many of my colleagues are, against the police and with procedures and processes relating to complete uh, to police complaints and obviously that is a, an important area there's a very substantial budget by the police service to make sure that uh, they can deal adequately with the number of people who sue them sadly of course this state of affairs has impacted not only on members of the public uh, many of whom feel unsafe on city streets but on the police themselves so that even those who are honest dedicated and conscientious are all too often regarded with varying degrees of certainty, suspicion and dismay. I'll tell you a story here which is not in the uh, review but it's a sad story of people from Eastern Europe going to the free world who as children they would see a police officer and say run away quickly and hide because you can see the the worry of, of coming from um, a despotic regime to the free world and then s still having that uh, concern. So you can see that there has to be that trust and that confidence and we have to bring that back, in my view anyway. Sadly, of course, small wonder that this long established comprehensive and erudite legal text has become an essential purchase today because it's really required reading for all practitioners because it has a practical and uh, plain speaking um, guide to every aspect of what is an increasingly complex area of law. It is, I would stress, for those who have a concern about what's happened to them, it is a specialist area as far as practitioners are concerned. Now it's under the editorship now of Stephen Cragg, King's Counsel and Sam Jacobs. And what they've done is they've brought together a distinguished team of contributors from Doughty Street Chambers, a leading set of chambers, um, and the solicitors Bat Murphy, uh, who are at the what we describe as the cutting edge of developments in the area of police misconduct and those involved in civil compensation claims. Uh, also, of course, judicial review challenges and appeals. Now, of course, there have been um, attempts, and there will be more attempts, I'm sure, to limit JRs, such as judicial reviews. I don't know where we are at the moment with that, but certainly there have been attempts um, because there is a view that there are too many of them. Uh, however, <clears throat> at, the, at the end of it, there are still uh, causes of action that can arise because of the behaviour of the police, and that's what this book gives you. The wealth of new material, of course, on offer here includes three new chapters which deal with the new 2020 police complaints and disciplinary procedures. A lot of criticism, of course, <coughs> of that because they're doing, basically the view is that they are judging themselves effectively and policing themselves, which again is very uh, highly criticised. But the reader is thus familiarised, of course, with a full range of procedures, strategies and tactics which are available, including, of course, the procedural advice, which I think is very important, and step-by-step -step guidance from the pre-issue considerations which you've got to give an advice through to trial, uh, jury trial and appeal. And I think it's important to manage expectations with the client carefully on this. Also do note that detailed guidance on the most common torts, including false imprisonment, very popular, assault and battery, malicious prosecution and misfeasance um, is actually there in the book. And it also provides clear analysis of developing causes of action against the police, such as negligence, privacy, discrimination and claims under, for instance, the Human Rights Act and the Data Protection Act. And the final chapter here on damages, I think, is especially 
worthy of note. We are not the most generous nation on earth when it comes to the award of damages. I think they could be increased, the figures. But however, um, at least you've got some idea of what you might be looking at. Also, do note the detailed uh, table, of contents, um, table of contents in the index and the no less than 80 pages of cases right at the beginning, uh, plus the statutes and statutory instruments and the table on European Union law and um, international legislation. I think busy practitioners will appreciate this book's authority, um, its ease of use, and the fact that in the words of the editors, the law is up to date as at the 30th of June 2022. Obviously, we've we've had a very momentous summer this summer. Um, the book appeared. It's actually the date of publication of this new fifth edition of the hardback is uh, paperback rather is the 31st of October, 2022, and I'm actually recording it at around that time. So it's just coming on the market now. And as I say, I think it's an, an excellent book for um, anybody to um, look at if you've actually got this sort of case. Let's just have a quick look at it again. Front page, spine, and then the back. If I just open it in the middle, you can see you've got the paragraph numbering at the sides. You've got a lot of extensive footnotes here as well. And um, this is actually violation to the European Convention on Human Rights. Just open it up. That, as I speak, is a very, very contentious area politically. But there again, um, I wasn't intended to open that page, but there we go. I'd like to thank both um, Stephen and Sam very much indeed, and also, of course, to the Legal Action Group. You make our lives a lot easier with these books, and I'm very grateful to be able to have them. You will find these books in the courts as well, which is an indication of their importance. But thank you to all. Bye-bye.